So we've introduced this Cobb Douglas production function, and now we're going to put it on two dimensional graphs. Uh, we know that the overall function we're looking at, right, is y. Uh, we have our total productivity, total factor productivity multiplied by capital raised to the alpha, labor raised to the beta. Uh, so we know that we're going to be keeping technology fixed. That's going to be an exogenous variable that'll shift this production function. But that still leaves us with kind of three unknowns. So instead of graphing this three-dimensionally, what we will do at different lessons during this class is look at uh, what this production function is going to look like if capital is what we are uh, changing and if we have labor that is, that is changing. So uh, right down here, we would have this is my production function, y equals a, which is going to be fixed, uh, k to the alpha, l to the beta. Again, l is going to be... Uh, uh, fixed in this case over here we'll have the opposite where a is still going to be fixed going to be exogenous but we have our capital uh, that is going to be fixed so l right here or k right here is what's going to be would be changing with all of this stuff so uh, what we uh, also know which we've talked about is we're going to have diminishing marginal returns so diminishing marginal returns uh, to both capital and labor. That means our alpha and our beta are going to be between zero and one. So that's going to get us this production function that looks like our concave function here. So this is a production function where A is fixed and L is fixed. This is our production function where A is fixed and K is fixed. What that means, the reason why I'm putting this here where A is fixed, L is fixed, A is fixed, K is fixed, is those are going to denote what our shift variables are going to be. So this is going to shift or exogenously shock this function. So these are the, um, the shifts. You don't have to always put these when you're labeling your production function, but it, it just might help out to kind of really solidify the concept that we're looking at K and L changing endogenously within this model, but we're looking at these variables changing exogenously. So let's go ahead and see what we're, what would happen. So like, um, let's go with one that's going to shift both of these. So let's say A increases. What does that mean? Well, it means that K hasn't changed nor L has changed. So we had some level of output, right? We had some level of output. But if we see A increase, it is going to move, it is going to shock, it is going to shift, however you want to say it, these functions upward. And we'll have a new production function. If we were to have, let's go to a different color, if we were to have K increase on this function over here on the left, an increase in K is actually moving along because K is increasing and it's an endogenous variable. We don't see a new function. Whereas over here, notice K is fixed. And so it's L staying the same. We would see, again, a shift upwards, a brand new production function. We can finish off this, uh, let's finish off this idea with a with the last variable, which is L increasing. Again, notice L is a shift variable, so that would be shifting this one up, but L is an endogenous variable over here, so it would be a movement along, and we'd see a movement along the function. Just so you know, in this lesson, for those of you that are watching this as one of my current students in Intermediate Macro, our current week lesson, we are going to focus, and you'll see this in a future video, on the labor market choice because we're looking at labor and how that as an input to production uh, will have an impact. So this is what we're doing this week. We will see this production function later on when we talk about choosing capital.